Rightio guys, welcome to another episode of the Gunman. So today we have this little uh, Mazda MX-30 and we are going to um, yeah, paint it, but I've got Shi Jun out there. That's not him, that's the other guy. Um, yeah, we've got Shi Jun out there and he's gonna paint it, so. He's been doing really well on the other Mazdas, so we've been doing a lot of the, um, uh, the Soul Red Crystal Mazdas. So yeah, this one here is just a, uh, pretty small job as you can see. I actually never thought that I was going to get this one painted today. I just started on it after lunch and as I was ready I just looked at the booth and looked at the time and I'm like let's get it done. Um, so I was, I was expecting to paint it tomorrow but sometimes I even impress myself with my speed. So we've got 45 minutes to paint it which is way more than enough. Um, I'm just being a little, just inspecting because these masters don't put much paint on there. Just making sure that there's no little cut throughs on those blend areas because we are going to blend. Uh, but it's looking pretty good. Is that a chip or not? Should be okay. So we'll color everything around here. Um, I was kind of like 50-50 on which gun to use because you'd nearly use a, um, a mini gun on a job like this, but we won't. I've decided not to. All we need to do now is give it a tack rag, a blow down, and uh, put a bit of foam tape in there. Recently swapped um, microfiber cloths. These are the ones from AutoSmart, and yeah, I found them to be a lot better. Can you get a bit of foam tape for the door handle, please? Just for here? Yeah, they're just a little bit bigger. They seem to last a little bit longer and they're better for the dust. Like the other ones we were using were the gear up ones from, um, uh, what is it, Repco. Um, but yeah, they, they sort of do have a little bit of lint on there, even though they're meant to be lint free. But um, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, you put that one away? I'll put this on. So we just need to put just a little bit of colour here, yeah? Low pressure, and we don't want too much around here. Just sort of aim it up, up this way if you can. Just a little bit. Um, and colour, we don't want to come up too high. We just come up like that, around here. No colour over here, it's a blend, yeah? We just keep it here. Do you want me to show you, or you want to do it? Uh, you, you Me to show you? Yeah. Okay. But you can do the clear, yeah? You, you do the clear? Yeah. All right, cool. Do you want to take that, please? Thanks. It just feels weird um, sitting here talking to my <laughs> talking to myself when someone else is here. <laughs> like walking you guys through the job when somebody else is here seems weird. Masking tape's flicked over there. Sometimes you can push it back. No, you probably just have to get it with a buff. Oh no, you're gonna make it? No, it'll be alright. Yeah, and a couple of nice little fast UV repairs. So UV filler and then UV primer on that. There was some um, slight, very small dents in it. Put, um, so I filled them up and then uh, put the UV primer on it as well. Is that your gun or mine? Uh, your gun, okay. 
same settings as always, two bar pressure. Maybe come in just a little bit. Oh no, it doesn't need it. Full, full fluid, full fan. So not two bar, 20 PSI. You kind of want to get, I don't know, what would you say? 70, 70% 70 covered on your first coat. You see that? That little bit where there was some white primer, just put it on a touch heavier. I don't really like putting four coats on. I, I don't mind putting the first coat on a bit wetter if I have to, but like I said, I sort of avoid putting four coats on where possible. Yeah. That counts as one. That's first coat. First coat. And then we'll get this blower. Sometimes I like to do this. Just clean it out, because you can get dust in it. And also when you turn it on first, when you turn it on, I like to point it away, yeah? because maybe a little bit of dust is in there and it blows out and start slowly and then you go up. You don't want to go full at the start. We can speed it up now. But we got the boost up to 30 degrees, nice and warm in here. So it should dry pretty fast. We have put, um, what is it? 25% reducer. You see how we keep the color small, yeah? Not, not too far. No colour here, no colour here, no colour here. Keep it small, it's better. Yeah, we will a little bit on this, yeah, a little bit on the next coat. Nice and fast, isn't it? Dries very fast. That extra thinners really helps it. When I used to thin it down to 15%, um, it took forever to dry in between coats. Always off the panel first, yeah? You don't go like that first because sometimes you can get a little bit of paint and it, it blows on there. There's just a little chip up there, that's all. Um, and then this one, a little bit, not, not as wet, you see? Not so wet this time. And that should be covered. Uh, you, you should really have full coverage after your second coat. That's what you want. Yeah, that's it. So I can't see through there at all. You can't see any primer, yeah? And then one more, and that's it. And you see we go just a little bit further out on that coat? Yeah. But black, very easy to blend. So with this color here, we just got the Spectro onto it. We got a good reading. Um, and being that we're blending everywhere, um, we just mix that and paint it. Which, like I said, it was a number four. Um, yeah, so the lower the number, the better the reading. Um, we've got the Digimatch too, so you've got like a, a visualization of the of the color. We'll get him out there to mix up some um, some 136 clear too. It's not my favorite clear, but it's easier to spray. The 105 is my preferred clear, but um, more prone to getting runs. So with, like I told, Told she doing. He, he's got a master. The 136 first, and then we'll get you on the 105 next. <laughs> but he's getting really good. You're get, getting really good at the 136. So nearly ready for the 105. Nearly. But that's that's looking good. Nice and clean. Yeah, one more, and that's it. Sometimes you can, on your last coat, you can turn the pressure down a little bit. Yeah, up to you. Just you don't have to. It's more on the silvers. And you see, not, not so wet this time.
It's a good gun. Love that gun. Good spray gun. That's it. That's it. Finish. And then um, you go mix up your clear, okay? Uh, maybe a little bit more thinners. Every 100 mil you put 50, yeah? Before we put 40? Yeah, because this Mazda, very, very thin paint, okay? So maybe mix up 300 uh, or maybe 400 mils, yeah? Mix up 400, okay? <clears throat> so he's gonna go out and mix up that clear. I was just told him to put a little bit more than usual in. So we always do put more than they recommend in, but this time I'm, I'm turning him to put even more in because um, just because it's a Mazda and we do we want that orange peel to sort of match the, the surrounding panels no use in having two like really thick thick finishes on oh sorry the three panels and then the, the guard sort of um yeah uh, really thin how good is that nice fast drying I'm confident that that's not going to die in the ass over the next week too. That was one of my the worst things I hated about PPG when I started working with it was it would look fine and then you give it a few days if the job sit around for a few days or a week they just pull 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 in as the the water's drying um, and a big part of that was that they they tell you not to put enough uh, thinners in in the Envirobase base coat here in Australia, they recommend 15%, but all you have to do is go up to 25%, um, and you'll pretty much eliminate 90% of that. Like, it'll still do it. All waters do do it um, to a certain extent. And it's actually, it's exacerbated by these lights that we've got these days. Like, back in the day, it was just fluoros all through, like, all workshops were just fluoro lights, but now you see those um, LEDs, those high-powered LEDs, you don't get away with anything under them. They will show you all the imperfections that you otherwise would not even know existed potentially, you know. If you just worked under fluoros your whole life, you wouldn't have even known that, you know, the, the pullback was happening. Um, so yeah, it's one of those things that you put it outside, you can't even see it, so either way. Uh, what spray gun do you want to use now? Spray gun. You want to use this one? Yeah. yeah, he's excited. He loves this one. The Sada CC. Oh, it's stuck in there. Let's get a different cup for it. Hmm. <clears throat> That's medium. I'll put that back. Yeah, so I hear that um, uh, 3M are, re are releasing a pot which is similar to this. So each job you get a new hard pot. So that'll be good. Cause look at this one here. This is only a new pot We've only done, what is that, maybe five or seven, and it's already getting dirty, and they're not that easy to clean. Like, it that's, doesn't come off, and you do get little bits of stuff sort of landing in your job, so, yeah. Where possible, I actually have been trying to use the SATA RPS, but not all my guns have the RPS adapters on them, so. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to put that in here when you're ready. It's probably too much, but it's alright. Doesn't matter. I'd rather have a bit left over than not enough. But this one doesn't have a gauge on it, you see? No pressure, no gauge. I have to do it by ear, listening. Let me check. Check there's no legs in it. That's what I like to do. Okay, that's ready. Dry nice and fast.
we'll give it a quick tuck rev. Just on the blends. So your overspray can sit on there and um, create what they call sand piling. So sort of like a bit of a sand pit type thing. <clears throat> mm. How's that looking good? Looks good, yeah? Okay. Nice and close, yeah? And fast. But you want it all to be closed, yeah? So you can't see the base coat. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more through here. It's very dry. You went, this is good up the top, but down here, you see, there's not enough. You see, no clear. Not enough clear. So come like this. I'll do, I'll do the middle one. And you do it like this. Yeah, slower. Like that, yeah? Okay, like that. That's perfect. That little bit here, perfect. Exactly, you want like that, all right? Go, finish everything here. Go over here, all the way up to there. You want everything to look like that, okay? Uh -huh. Yeah. a little bit you see through here it needs a bit more keep going yeah and you mix more later it's okay it, it needs more on this first coat see here see that it's too dry not not enough keep going I want it to look like that I want you to do same okay Good. Okay, that's enough. Now, we might need to go mix up a little bit more, yeah? Look at me, I'll take a photo of you. Give us a thumbs up. <laughs> Looks good. Okay, now, go mix up a little bit more. Mix up maybe, um, uh, 250 or something. So yeah, I think uh, he needs to get his eye in there a little bit better. Like that is pretty much perfect. That is ideal. If we can make um, that look like that, like we've got the ideal look, right? But there's not gonna be enough material on there at the moment with that one coat, okay? So yeah, the thinning ratio and the pressures and the distance, like everything's pretty much right. Um, oh, and the teacher, mate. The teacher is the best. You won't get better than him. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, you gotta be humble, don't you? But no, in, in, all, in saying that, um, I do get lots of feedback from the guys that I work with. They're generally pretty happy with, um, you know, with they, they always seem to be very thankful of the, um, the guidance that I do give them. I'm, yeah, the way I see it, man, the better you are, um, that makes my life easier. You know, so the better, the better my workmates are, that makes my life easier. And huh, why not make your life easier? So, being that we did put that extra bit of thinners in it, we've kind of essentially turned it into an MS, if that makes sense. Um, uh, and, and, and yeah, having the extra thinners will actually help it flash in between coats as well. Because um, I, I don't know, these days I do prefer doing like a, a, a more conventional two coat system, right? Rather than trying to do the tack and whack or 3070, whatever you may call it, with the ultra thick clears, where you just go one quick coat, 
um, and then slow, slow it down a little bit and, and do the one visit clears. Like, I'm definitely more than capable of doing it. I just find like the longevity and it, depending on what clears you're using, I just find that you, it's easier to replicate those factory re results um, by doing a two coat system. You know, if, if you left if you left all that thinners out, there's no way. I mean, well, no, that's probably wrong to say there's no way. You can, but you've got to work a lot harder, right? And the other thing is, like, we're making decent money on these jobs, and that, I mean, my point is, enough that we don't have to scrimp and save over 50 or 100 mils extra clear. You know what I mean? So yes, you will use a little bit more clear doing it this way. Um, that looks really good, okay? Same on the second coat. Look at this, orange peel, nice and glassy. Good reflection, you see that? Ooh. Perfect. The same on the second coat. Um, but it actually works out well, because that's, yeah, maybe a, about ready now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's about ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I think that should be enough too. Just check over it, make sure you're happy with it. I can already see at the top of that quarter panel, it's a bit dry. You see up the top of that quarter panel over here? Look at that, over here. See through there, it's just a little bit dry. It's not too bad. Yeah, and check. Check yourself, everything, get your eye in. Get your eye in on the um, the reflection. Make sure you're happy with it. Are you happy? Um, yeah? It does look pretty good. That's pretty good. It's got a little bit of orange, a little bit through that door, but I think it's probably okay. Yeah, maybe just a little bit, just quick, not too much. I don't want you to run it. Just a bit of a wet up, that's all. It's gonna give us a bit more material on there, which is a good thing too. But that's a damn clean job. It's done really well. Very good, very good. Are you happy? Make sure you're happy with it. That looks good. Good work, Shijun. Say hello to Instagram and YouTube. <laughs> He's a good learner, very good learner. Let's have a close up. Give them a close up look at the spray gun. It's, you wanna unplug that please? Unplug it, that's it, cool. So that's the gun, the starter jet RP 1.3 CC. Um, I actually haven't used this gun for a while because I've been having fun using the uh, Supernova Series 1. Um, can you clean that out please? I'll give you guys a good close up look at it, but that's killer man. Jeez, this guy will be putting me out of a job if I'm not careful. Ha. Just kidding. There will always be room in a shop for the gun, man. Have a look at that, eh? Killer. Oh, I could shave in that, mate. You shave. <laughs> nice. Rightio, guys. Thanks for watching. Until next time, get out there and paint some shit. Coming out. See ya. See ya. <laughs>